Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about local insects. What are our friends and what are our foes? But before we do that, let's get into some vocabulary. So we should know what the word friend means, right? A friend is someone who takes care of us, they're beneficial to us, and they're someone that we love. Now a foe is the opposite. A foe can be harmful, they are not beneficial, and we usually need to avoid them. So we're gonna look at some different insects and see who is our friend, who is our foe, and why. Before we do that, before we do that, let's look at what is an insect. Insects are the most common invertebrates in the world. Now an invertebrate is an animal that does not have a backbone. Their bodies actually have a hard outer casing called an exoskeleton. So think about we have a skeleton on the inside of our bodies, but it's under our skin. So their skeleton is actually on the outside. They have three pairs of legs, so six legs in total, and many also have a pair of wings. So every insect doesn't have wings, but if they do, they have two. Their body is divided into three parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Looking at our diagram here, we can see how those are broken down. The head is where the antenna, the eyes, and the mouth are. The thorax is the middle section, which has the legs and wings if they have them. And then the abdomen is on the bottom. So we're gonna start off with the bumblebee. What do you think? Is the bumblebee our friend or our foe? Well, the bumblebee is our friend and you can see why in this picture here on this slide. This bumblebee is actually pollinating a flower. Now pollinators are very important animals. We all depend on pollinators because we all depend on plants to survive. So, um, these plants have to be pollinated, and that's what these animals do. Termites. Now you can see the termite on the right doesn't have wings, but the one on the left does. Do you think a termite is a friend or a foe? Now bear in mind, these guys are actually very, very small. So this picture shows some of the damage that termites can do to a piece of wood. So they're so small, but if you have a colony of them and you have thousands and thousands of them living in a structure, they can be very harmful, especially if that building is made out of wood. So you can see here what the termites have done to the wood, how they've eaten it up, and that makes them our foe. carpenter ant. Just like the termite, this isn't a very big animal. It's not as small as a termite, but it is small. These aren't fire ants, but they're carpenter ants. So if we know anything about carpenters, we know carpenters like to work with wood. So what do you think a carpenter ant likes to eat? Well, they like to eat wood. And again, one by himself, probably not a big deal, but usually they're going to live in a colony, and that colony is going to eat um, wooden buildings or wooden structures. And so you can see here, that's what these guys are tearing up. So that makes them a foe. Dragonfly. We ought to know this one. Dragonflies are usually always going to be our friends, but do we know why? So not only are they pretty to look at and they're um, pretty, pretty tame, they don't mess with us too much, dragonflies are very beneficial to us because they eat something that is harmful to humans, something that is a pest to humans too. I don't know if you can tell in this picture what he's got in his mouth, but he is eating a mosquito. Anything that eats a mosquito is definitely a friend of ours. The harlequin bug. Some of you may have heard of the character Harley Quinn in the comics or the movies, and if you know anything about that character, you know she's not very good. So you can probably take a good guess on whether this one is a friend or a foe. So 
So I hope you guessed foe because this animal is not our friend. And it's not our friend because of the damage that it can do to our plants and our crops. If you look here at the leaf, you can see that this leaf has several spots on it. And those spots are a result of the damage that that insect is doing to the plant. A ladybug. Most of us know the ladybug is definitely our friend, but do we know why? Not only do ladybugs let us pick them up, but they are also our friend because they eat harmful pests. One of the pests or in insects or animals that they eat is, are called aphids. Now aphids are tiny little insects and they will be very harmful to plants and flowers. And so they can, they can destroy what we're growing. Think about how small an aphid has to be in order for a ladybug to eat it, because ladybugs are not huge. But they certainly do eat these pests and are beneficial and friends to us. The carrion beetle. I didn't put a picture of the carrion beetle doing his job. He's not the prettiest insect, and he's got kind of a dirty job, but he is our friend. Now, the carrion beetle actually eats decaying or decomposing animals. So something that's died because maybe a predator attacked it, or it got hit by a car, or just died from natural causes. Those animals start to decompose, and the carrion beetle is one of those that helps with the decomposition. So this is a beneficial and helpful animal to us. The yellow jacket. This is one of those insects that we can talk about if he could be a friend or he could be a foe. He's got pluses and minuses to him. So for most of us, the yellow jacket we see as a foe because he delivers a harmful and painful sting. So that usually puts him in that category for most people. But he is also a pollinator and we know that pollinators are essential and they are impo important. Um, for plants and animals. So I'll let you decide which one you think he is. The red-legged grasshopper. This is another one of those that by himself we could probably overlook him, but when he and his friends get together it's another story. This slide shows a swarm of grasshoppers, and when they get together and swarm like this, they are incredibly harmful to crops and fields. They'll eat any living plant that they can. So historically, these guys were a big, big problem in America. If you've ever read the Little House on the Prairie books by Laura Ingalls Wilder, she talks about swarms of locusts and grasshoppers um, coming in and destroying her family's wheat crops. Today, with pest management, uh, we don't usually run into this problem, but there are other parts of the world where they still have um, these guys swarming and destroying their crops. So because of that, we put them in the foe category. The Ick Newman wasp. This one has a fun name to say, Ick Newman. So we see the name wasp and we automatically go to foe, but this guy's a little bit different. This isn't like the paper wasps or some of the other wasps that might attack us because they're protecting their nests. This one is a parasitic wasp, and I'm going to show you guys what that means. Now we hear parasites and we think foe, we think bad, but this particular wasp lays its eggs on certain animals that are typically harmful to most crops. So that actually makes them our friend. So what does that mean, parasitic wasps? They lay their eggs onto another living animal. In this case, in this picture, it's a tobacco worm. And those eggs, when they hatch, will eventually start to eat the host, eat whatever they're laid in. So. Kind of sci-fi, kind of creepy, but um, it's actually helpful if you were a farmer, especially if you were a farmer during the time period at our Living History Farm, you would have found these particular wasps very helpful um, because those tobacco worms would, would mess up your tobacco crop and you needed that crop in order to make money. 
So uh, you can see what's going on there in the picture is a result of an ichneumon wasp planting its eggs on that worm. So that actually makes them a friend. The Japanese beetle. This one's pretty, but he is not our friend. He is a foe. If you look here in the pictures, you can see why he's considered a foe. We've got a little rose bloom here, and these beetles are just eating up every bit of that. They will also eat up your leaves on your plants, and so that makes them a pest and a foe. The honeybee. We should know this one. This one is definitely our friend. So not only does the honeybee make honey, but it is also a pollinator. And the different types of plants and flowers that are pollinated are going to actually affect the taste of the honey. So your local honey um, will taste different than the kind you buy at the grocery store. And they say that a lot of times it's actually better for people with allergies if you have local honey because you're being exposed to that pollen and that can help you during allergy season. The mason bee. This is kind of a fuzzy bee. And this one is definitely actually a friend. Let's look at why. So sometimes people think mason bees are carpenter bees, but they're not. They don't eat wood, although they might use sawdust to build their nests. And they usually build those nests where there are naturally occurring gaps, and they'll make their nest in chambers out of mud and other mixtures. They are actually better pollinators than honeybees, so that definitely um, puts them in the friend category. Butterflies. Now, we all know butterflies are our friends. We've got the caterpillar on the left, which will eventually turn into the monarch butterfly on the right. But do we know why they're our friends? So looking on the left, you see the caterpillars on these leaves here. And they are actually eating some of those harmful pests that we talked about earlier. Those animals like aphids that we mentioned that the ladybugs like to eat too. So that makes those caterpillars beneficial. The butterflies are also pollinators. So again, we've talked about how important they are. It's not just bees, wasps and um, butterflies can also be beneficial that way to us. Now we've got a few different craft activities we like to do here at the museum that show off our insects. Uh, one of them is an activity uh, called tissue paper butterflies where we take the outline of a butterfly and I can provide you with that outline in a link that you can print out at home or if you want to try and draw one you can certainly do that. Um, we take scraps of tissue paper and we glue them inside the wings and on the body of that butterfly and then cut out around the edges and you've got your tissue paper butterfly and you can use any colors you want um, and it can make a really pretty little piece. Another thing we like to do is make coffee filter butterflies and so what we do with that is we take markers, we color in the coffee filter and then we spray it with just a little bit of water. You don't want too much, that can get very messy. So maybe have an adult help with that. Um, you let the filter dry and then you twist it in the middle and you put a clothespin over it. And then you can take pipe cleaners and shape them in your antenna as well. And don't forget the three sections of your insect, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And finally, another one we like to do sometimes are build mason bee houses. So we talked about how these guys are even better pollinators than honeybees. And one of the things we can do to attract them is to make a place, a cavity, where they can build their nests. So you can do this with a few different things. Just about any kind of cylinder you have at home will work for this. Uh, whether it's a flower pot or an old cup or even a soup can or a coffee can. You can use anything you want to decorate. So we, we decorated um, 
flower pots here. And then you wanna put your little tubes inside. What we did was we made tubes using strips of newspaper. We wrapped them around a crayon or a pencil and then we taped them and then pushed the pencil or the crayon out and then you've got your tubes. You stuff your containers full of these tubes Make it tight enough so that they're not falling out, and you wanna give that a little trim on the top too so they're not going past the rim. And then what you've done is you've created a cavity there where the mason bees can build their nests. And then you can hang it up outside and hopefully attract some of these beneficial pollinators. Hope you've enjoyed playing friend or foe today and learning about our local insects, and we hope to see you soon at the museum.